Hi, it's me, Rachel, and I'm in HD. You might notice the slight set change here today. That's because I've got some help now for a species of the day um, with Dennis Mortimer from our OCVN group here in Ohio. And today I wanted to talk about dark-eyed juncos, or juncos, whichever way you want to say it. The dark-eyed junco is here in Ohio only in the wintertime. You may have not seen it, but it's a pretty common bird who will come to any feeder. It's a medium-sized sparrow with a round head, and, that's the, and the first thing that catches your eye is the dark top sharply contrasting with the white bottom of the bird. The color can vary, though, depending on your location. Females have a browner top color, but there are other colors due to there being 12 different subspecies. Subspecies meaning that there are 12 different regions where these birds live and don't interbreed, but if they did find each other, they could get together and make babies. The main types are the Oregon subspecies on the west coast, and that has a black head and wings with brown body, and in the southern Rocky Mountains, there's a morph with a gray head and a brown back. And then on the east coast, we have the slate-colored bird, which has the gray top and the white bottom. The ones in the Black Hills of the Dakotas have a white line along their wing, and there's one with a more blush-colored underbelly, and that spends its summers in the northern Rockies. Here in Ohio, you may have noticed that we have the slate-colored variation and don't see a lot of females. This is because females fly th further south than the males because the males want to get back sooner in order to find good breeding territories in the spring. On average, they're about six inches long with a wingspan of eight inches and weigh only about an ounce. If you watched my previous video on snowy owls, you'll know what wingspan is and why birds weigh so little. They're a true winter bird for North America, as they can be seen from sea to shining sea, which has given them the plain old nickname of snowbirds. They're here during the winter in flocks or groups, looking for food, and in the summer they live and breed up in Canada. Now some stay put year-round, mostly in the mountainous regions of western and northeastern U.S., but the mountainous birds actually have shorter wingspans than the migrating type because the mountainous birds don't need to migrate. They prefer to breed in coniferous forest, and if you watched my previous video on spruce trees, you know what a conifer is. In order to impress the ladies, males pick up nest material, hop around, flick and fan the white on the tips of their outer tail feathers, and the females will go around and make their nest on the ground. But they're hidden in the roots of upturned trees, rock faces, or other ground disturbances. The nest is about four inches across, and they usually use them only once. They have three to six light-colored speckled eggs. In a group, these eggs are called a clutch, and from this group, usually one to three survive. They are quick to hatch, only needing to be sat on for about two weeks, and the chicks will then fledge about one to two weeks after that. Junko's like hip-hop. I mean, they like to hop while they look for seeds on the ground. Instead of walking around like a dove, you know, with the head bob, they're hopping around looking for seeds on the ground. Some of the popular seeds they enjoy are buckwheat, lamb's quarter, sorrel, chickweed, and millet. They exhibit a feeding behavior called riding where they land on the grass seed cluster at the top and ride it down to the ground where they can easily eat it. But they're also wonderful flyers and can go after insects as well. If you see them interacting with each other during the winter, it, it is because they're in a group that has a hierarchy and they might be challenging each other for positions. A fun fact about Junko is that it is the Latin word for rush, rush which is plant. Plus, they are the second largest estimated population of birds in North America after the American robin. So there's a whole lot of them, millions. There are some different songs that they sing, mostly in high-pitched trill for a couple of seconds. And this can sound like a few other types of birds. And when aggravated or alarmed, they do a chip or a cue. Take a listen. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching Species of the Day. If you liked it, please let us know by clicking the links below. 
and subscribing so that when our next video comes out, you'll know. If you want to read more about Dark Eye Junkos, check the links out in the description below. See you next time.